Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, a few months ago, we had a classic fight between two technicians, right? Kell Brook beat Sean Porter. It was a fascinating fight. Right, Porter kept coming inside. Kell Brook kept tying him up. Right, the guys engaged in a chess match. At the end of the fight, Kell Brook was awarded the decision. I thought Kell Brook deserved that decision. Right, but there's the Sean Porter crowd who believes that you can't lose your title getting held as much as Sean Porter got held in that fight right well let me say this and I don't say it lightly I believe both Sean Porter and Cal Brook are in for rough fights their next time out right one of the fights on my radar as a possible upset play it's certainly a value play with the casino is Jojo Dan's challenge of Kell Brook that's coming up on March 28th. Understand, Jojo Dan right now is a greater than 6-1 to one underdog in that fight, right? I just believe that the red flags are out here. I'll agree, Dan doesn't hit that hard. I'll agree, the fight's in Kell Brook's backyard, right? An argument can be made that if Kelbrook is standing at the end of 12 rounds, he'll be awarded the decision. But understand, Kelbrook is coming back from a machete attack, and even if he weren't, people need to understand that Jojo Dan is one of those slick fighters who, on a given night, can beat anybody. Right? There's no way. There's simply no way Jojo Dan should be a 6-1 to one underdog against anybody at 147 pounds, right? Well, let's talk now about Roberto Garcia, Sean Porter's next opponent. You know, Garcia is someone I followed for a long time. If you go back and if you look at Garcia's challenge of Antonio Margarito years ago, you're going to find out that that's one of those rare fights where Antonio Margarito actually fought a guy who was more aggressive than he was. Right? Margarito actually starts moving out of the pocket. Margarito starts fighting on his back foot. Don't believe me? Look at the tape. Now, boxing is rock, paper, scissors. You can be the better boxer against 95% of common opponents and still have a style problem against an individual opponent, right? I believe Roberto Garcia, who's a bigger than 5-1 to one underdog, is going to create problems for Sean Porter. I was just on OddsChecker.com, and they have a little feature on that site where you know they say most popular bets and it looks like everyone is taking Sean Porter in this fight now Sean Porter is a technician in other words he's relying on nuance right let me repeat that he's relying on nuance so he sets things up where He's outside against Paulie Malinashi. Then he does quick strikes during lulls in the action. He can lead with power shots. That's when I believe he's at his best. He's against Devin Alexander, more upright fighter. He understands that he can come inside of Devin and get low on Devin Alexander. Right? Porter has great legs. Porter is moving around the ring. Right? Great lateral movement, which he'll need against Roberto Garcia. Right? Porter faints a lot. Opponents understand that Porter can punch. So they have to take the feints seriously. Sometimes the feints are all you need to throw an opponent off balance. Right? You don't even have to put yourself at risk of throwing the punch. 
if you hint at the punch but don't throw it, you can still have that hand back here for defense, right? If you're an opponent looking for cues, Sean Porter is difficult to fight because you're reading the feints, you're doing all of that. But understand, nuanced guys like Sean Porter, technicians like Sean Porter, can lose to non-technicians, can lose to guys who come in and just want to get physical, who come in with a game, you know, hunt him down, land left hook, throw right hand. Guys who keep it simple, who aren't afraid to get hit, because if you're hitting them, then they feel you're in a shootout with them. And they believe their gun is bigger than yours. Right? Those kind of fighters, James Kirkland, can overwhelm a technician. You can imagine how it goes. You're outside, you're fainting something, the other guy's not even reading your feints. He's just coming forward. Right? You're moving at angles. You hit a guy with a counter after he comes in and you step to the side and throw it. Right now, some fighters will make adjustments. Right? They'll say, you know what? I'm not going to come inside like that again. But other guys will say, hey, to hell with that. This guy can't keep up that act for 12 rounds. I'm going to keep coming inside. He throws that counter. He can hit me with that all day. The question's not, what am I going to do differently? The question's, what my opponent's going to do differently when I continue to come inside to wear him down? Roberto Garcia is that kind of fighter. He's like James Kirkland. He's always on his front foot. There is no back foot for Roberto Garcia. There is no back foot. Let me point out too, you just saw the Adrian Broner, John Molina fight, where John Molina is conscious of Broner's feints, is afraid to throw punches. What would have happened in that fight if Right? Molina actually believed in his own punching power and thought, you know what, if I stand here and not throw punches against a master boxer, I'm going to lose by wide decision. Right? He's going to look good. If I allow Adrian Broner to actually box, I'm allowing him to do what he does best. I'm going to come forward. I'm going to try to cut off the angles on Broner. Yeah, he can box. I don't care what he's doing. Right? I'm just trying to throw a left hook. I'm just trying to throw a right hand. Right? I believe that's going to be Roberto Garcia's mindset. Right? Understand, life is simpler for lead punchers who are not trying to set traps, who are not trying to read feints. Right? Who, as I like to put it, run red lights. Now understand, Garcia has a great chin, right? He's never been KO'd. He's fought big hitters like Antonio Margarito, who stopped Miguel Cotto, right? Like Breedis Prescott, who stopped Amir Khan. And Garcia lasted both fights, right? He's been in with big punchers and he survived. More importantly, he believes in his chin. In other words, he's not there trying to cover it up too much. He's coming forward. He wants action. In my opinion, this fight is going to have Sean Porter on his back foot moving around the ring. It's going to have Roberto Garcia on his front foot coming forward right the way I'm gonna try to play this to get leverage on the casino 
is I'm going to take Roberto Garcia to win the fight at greater than 5 to 1 odds, hedged with Sean Porter by decision. Right? I don't see Sean Porter being able to knock this guy out. I don't. I see Garcia trying to hunt him down round after round. The things that work for Porter against Pauli Malinashi, for example, aren't going to work against Roberto Garcia. Right? In other words, there's a suddenness to Porter's game against Malinaji. He knew Malinaji was on his back foot. He knew he'd have time to think. Roberto Garcia doesn't care when Sean Porter jumps in. Roberto Garcia, if he had his way, would have Sean Porter jumping in all 12 rounds. Right? He just wants to fight. He feels he's stronger than his opponents. He knows his left hook is a game changer. He knows that. Right? He just wants to stand upright by the way he stands upright and throw punches. Porter is going to have a hard time even going low on him. Because Garcia loves to throw body punches. Right? If Porter is bent over, Garcia is still going to be throwing punches. Right? Just ask yourself. How has James Kirkland been winning fights? Right? Hasn't it been by walking down and smothering opponents? Right? Hasn't it been by having opponents who rely on feints and jabs to keep you off of them? Hasn't it been to take the opponent's jabs, ignore the opponent's feints, and continue to come forward? Right? This is going to resemble a zombie movie. Right? Sean Porter is going to be in the ring. Garcia is going to look huge. Understand, both of these guys really aren't welterweights. Both of these guys really belong at 160. Right? But Garcia is going to look huge. If you look closely at Porter, Porter is going to look huge. He's shorter, but he's wider. Right? The difference, though, is Porter's the technician. Garcia is decidedly not a technician, right? Garcia has reduced the sport to its simplest form. He's actively ignoring feints. He's aware of them. He's just actively ignoring feints, trying to turn them to his advantage. So, if I had to simply pick a winner, I'd pick Sean Porter by decision, right? But... Because odds are involved, because the casinos are offering me better than 5 to 1 odds on the Garcia side of the play, right? The bet I'm recommending here is Garcia to win the fight, hedged with Porter by decision. I hope you give it a look. Thanks for stopping by.